Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of the Valley Cast. Uh, my name is Elliot Morgan. I'm here with my lovely girlfriend and fellow creator content, uh, Grace Helbig. Yeah, creator content. Yeah, we had a crazy my astrological sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna have a fun. You get it ready for a fun time. Um, a fun day. Yeah, we've decided to record a podcast first thing in the morning because we haven't been influenced by the hardships of the day yet. Yes, we're getting it done <laughs> fresh because each time we wake up and we're like, we're gonna do because we we're doing this and then we're gonna do a pilot on our premiere podcast about uh reality tv or whatever premier the heck podcast. uh yeah incredible podcast yeah. and uh and we're starting this but each time we get up to do it the day wears us down and we go how oh, yeah, do it well, we'll do it later, also so. one of our special skills is being able to so effortlessly talk each other out of doing something. oh it's the best it's sometimes not even verbalized it's just like a, a an aside look yeah. and a, a slight nod okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. A haphazard shrug is all it takes yeah. to get us out um, of it. So what we're doing on this particular episode is we have gone to uh, directly to the source, to you guys. Oh, did you bring my volume down a little bit? Was it peaking a little bit? Yeah, you I was getting excited. A little loud. I got a little excited. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to you guys at patreon.com slash the Valley Folk and asked questions um, about anything you wanted. It could be questions to us. It could be questions uh, asking for bad advice. Um, or it could be questions for Joe and Steve that I would just answer um, on my own accord. On behalf of them, can I just say that your guys is the more you've shown me of Patreon posts and like Reddit posts, your guys' fan base is so incredibly deep and lovely that it blows my mind. I, I'm, yeah. I'm learning the intricacies of uh this collective fandom and it's really so lovely that, isn't it it's crazy I and know. it doesn't stop being You're good that boys way. and you got some good babies that are watching and supporting and it makes me very very happy thanks babe it's there it's also like they're real smart <laughs> oh they're so smart which is also uh a little unnerving how intelligent they are but it should speak yeah. to how smart you guys are to cultivate that kind of Thanks, um, babe. That's yeah. real sweet of you. No, it's just very, it's very cool to see. Yo, very, we got, very cool. I, I'm not going to get into it, but we'll, because I, I got one of my um, problems in life <laughs> is that I have a big, big old dumb mouth. I didn't used to have a big old dumb mouth. Oh. And I have a big, dumb, big, dumb mouth. When now. did the transition happen? Years of therapy, uh, like too much therapy. And then when you started paying to talk, when I started paying to talk, then I was like, I can do this for free all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, why am I doing it here? I can do it everywhere. You want to listen to what I have to say? <laughs> uh, but man, guys, it has been such a crazy transformative time that we've been in um, a hectic time. And so we're going to try to keep this nice and light and fun, but hope you're doing well. Uh, but there's exciting stuff on the horizon that I'm not going to talk about because I, sometimes it's cool to keep things so close to the chest, so mystique, so filled with mystique. Yeah, but your, your big old mouth. I'm is, so excited. You, you're, uh, you're nice dropping it. some um, thoughts and ideas I'll do about the YouTube things. vague. Uh, yeah, secret project. Yeah, secret, <laughs> secret project. I can't talk about that. Okay, so uh, first question. So these are all from Patreon. All from our lovely patrons over Patreon. Don't oh. you look at it, you little rascal. I'm not looking. You have a... I saw your eyes. Your screen is tinted, so I can't even read it if I wanted to. And there's that. And thank you to whoever did the intro <laughs> for this, by the way. Okay, Micah Alley says, mm -hmm. quick question. How is Joe both so handsome and so funny? I mean, how is Joe all of the wonderful things that he is? I mean, what's it like for him... He's also uh, the most humble person I maybe have ever met in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And he is so incredibly talented on so many fronts that, I mean, it must be exhausting to be so good and to be and to have such humility about it at the same time. Yeah. It's, I um, hope he sleeps. I'd I like know. a TikTok of him sleeping. I don't know if he's eating. He doesn't eat. Do you know this? Have you no. ever seen Joe eat? I bet you haven't. No, I've seen him fart, which makes me think he eats because that means his digestion is doing something to something in his body. <laughs> Last night we were, uh, uh, we got done with a really heavy conversation that was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I opened my phone and there was a text from Steve and it's just a video of his face. And it just goes, he's out in his balcony like that. And then just without a missing a beat grace is like who is that was that steve was that steve farting <laughs> and uh, it was it was a very beautiful yeah, uh, you moment guys communicate and, um, and in joe, a certain way yeah and joe knows how to fart like a cartoon but um, the thing that i've learned that you've just um introduced well, me to is 
that Joe is doing incredible work over on TikTok <laughs> secretly and has for months and has built up a giant fan base over there, which is the most Joe Beretta thing that you could do, which is just secretly infiltrate another platform and thrive on it completely and yeah. then go, oops, um, yeah, by the way, this is happening over here for me. Yep. It's great. It's, it's so and it's like perfect. He, his brain works in those completely uh random small chunks mm -hmm. of silliness which is just what works is perfectly on tiktok and so highly recommend if you guys i'm sure you already all have because you're great fans but highly Maybe recommend. i didn't know it, it took uh yeah, Some you're his meeting. best friend, and yeah. you didn't know for months. And I, I, on my own accord, and went, we don't mean to be outing Joe right now, no, but <laughs> but we, I've I've run out of things to look at, and I got so <laughs> bored that I looked at my friend's stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how you really know that you're out of things when you start actively looking at your, <laughs> your friend's, friend's content. Kind of, yeah. Like you can't just talk to him, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I went down the wormhole a little bit, and I was like, yeah, this is he knows exactly what he's doing. This is really good. His brain's so built for it; it's perfect, and he's just so humble about it. It's so funny but uh yeah how is he both so handsome and so funny i think it's the humility i think the humility keeps him yeah i think that's how you can keep both of those yeah so. you know that people get old when they're raging narcissists exactly <laughs> that takes it out of you um grace yes next question okay comes from our lovely patron sarah griffiths oh yeah hey sarah she's over on lovely. this might get weird too oh yeah lovely she's a lovely uh gal mm -hmm. um i hit the wrong button so it's i know i'm watching you stall while there you try is. to reload your page you're not gonna right believe now. this crazy question okay. what's a weird habit um the other person has that you find entertaining oh easy i call you elliot put down morgan because you put things down so haphazardly through the house that if i'm looking for anything and i ask you where it is i know you'll never know it's you put things down anywhere you a, a surface is an opportunity to lose something for you everything is a big shelf <laughs> yeah everything is a shelf everything's a shelf <laughs> uh so yeah. that's my favorite quality in you and i you get nervous that i think it's um bad but i think it's so funny that I'm it's glad. It's literally just one of those on the tops like... of shelves on tops of different the fridge in the no, in yeah. the washer dryer like things if there is a surface area, it has an opportunity to um, have something on it that you'll never remember is Grace, there. <laughs> you know, in in psychoanalysis, there is the you know practice of like unearthing things and realize looking at your problems head on uh, rather than repressing them. Okay. And you would think that if I found out that I, if I if I came, if I came face to face with how I'm a put down person, mm -hmm. that it would help me not do that because no I'm, it's just um, it's only getting worse yeah no it's it's now become your superpower yeah you've it's been um you know uh shown to light so now mm -hmm. it's become something that like is in you yeah and uh it's yeah it's hilarious that i know that i cannot count on you to know where things nope. are no <laughs> and there's somehow not even that, my own things but somehow that's uh that's uh brings me joy Good. I'm yeah. glad. Keep going. <laughs> what about you? Um, or is just, that a question just for yeah, me? Yeah, no. You eat, when you eat your cold food in the morning, like your like mm. Greek food first thing in the morning. Yeah, I love cold leftovers in yeah. the morning, and you think that's act well. You I'm think not, it's gross. I think it's. I think it's charming. It's growing on me. It's charming. <laughs> you say with your shoulders sometimes touching your ears. <laughs> sometimes it's. It, it, it's charming. Sometimes it's a little gross. Oh, and then you do. Uh, you get real mad when you're playing Scrabble, and then you start going. It's not looking good for old Helbig. Oh and yeah, when I start losing, you get real upset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You have to go on a double date with a celebrity couple. Who are you going with? Whoa, a double date with the celebrity couple. Who are we going with? Oof. Um, Bert and Ernie. Deal. Okay. Uh, Callum Whale. Um says hey jones Callum Whale, what a name yeah very cool name that sounds like um like a an international saxophone player yeah <laughs> <laughs> um callum says hey joe and steve how do you really feel about that elliot guy mm, 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 mm. joe mm. and steve probably feel like I'm... they would make up a song right now about you that is the biography of your life <laughs> yeah and it'd probably be about me like not liking song bits yeah uh-huh uh and then yeah it would be a it'd be that one of those things yep. that they would do i miss them we haven't seen each other in a long time I, I don't remember what they look like even lebron says you guys uh could play the newlywed game it could be a fun way for us to learn more about grace but 
that's not what we're doing. Isn't that <laughs> Great funny? setup for what a completely we... disappointing How about that? answer. Well, it looks like we're not doing that. Um, but the newlywed game is mostly like, where's the craziest place you've made Whoopi? <laughs> Thank so you, um, how are you doing? Are you having a fun t- uh, time on this podcast? So I am. Is this a stall? Uh, no, I'm genuinely, <laughs> genuinely curious. I'm having a lovely time Do on I the sound, Belly Folk podcast. I feel like I sound more tired than I've ever, like my voice is. Yeah, your voice is, your octave is low. Ugh. It's an early morning octave. You're getting your bearings to you. That's true. It is kind of early. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the worst thing you've ever heard while pretending to be asleep, says Chelsea. That I will oh. not answer, but I do have a comedy special available on Amazon Prime uh, oh. that you can watch about overhearing things. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, can you know of anything? Do you really pretend to sleep? Do you recall doing No, that? but I know when I was like a kid pretending to sleep that you yeah. just hear parents. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Do you remember anything? No, I, I've heard my parents have sex when I was younger. You did? Yeah. And mm. it's like not, we didn't have a big house. Our walls weren't uh, soundproof. Yeah. That's the worst thing. Like regularly? You heard it regularly? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know about your past. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, Chelsea, thanks for that horrible. Yeah, that's uh, it. You know that that question has no good answers. <laughs> you know that nothing good can come of that. Yep. Um, and now my day is ruined. Ma- uh, Matthew Mayer has an interesting question. This is something I'd like to talk to you guys about. When you guys experience something interesting together, is there some kind of negotiation that happens where you decide who's allowed to use it for their podcast? That is a great question. Oh. No, but we should because there's like There's weird, a lot of crossover. A lot of crossover. Like the Hamster Walmart story popped up in like seven well, different podcasts. To be fair, in, uh, in the world of quarantine, there hasn't been much... Um, to mine for our creative endeavors. So when a minor moment happens, Anything. we uh, yeah completely uh, extort it for our own mm-hmm. purposes and benefits. But you and Mamrie are like, like... I feel like there's an unspoken rule that I get to use it because our podcast is specifically dedicated to ridiculous moments throughout the week, whereas the Valley Folk is a much more lighthearted, intimate look into your lives and thoughts and things about the world the at stuff large. Stuff that's happening, yeah. Things yeah, that are interesting. and mine is just uh, very much based on, let me explain this moment that happened. That but said, sometimes I have nothing to talk about. I understand. And, uh, <laughs> nor do we ever get upset with each other. Uh, we laugh at how ridiculous we're able to stretch a small moment into so much <laughs> stuff. Because it's like, wow, this is kind of sad that we've had to take this one 30 second yeah. moment and use it on seven different uh, platforms, which also makes you go. Are we stretching ourselves too thin? Too much. Are we stretching ourselves? <laughs> maybe we should, work, or maybe we should just. Do, do I need more to things? keep talking? Maybe I should shut the fuck up well, for a second. You and Mamrie are like crazy, like good about not revealing stuff to each other before. Yeah, she you says hit it's like cage gladiators. That yeah, all of a sudden we're allowed to out. Yeah. I think that's real cool, but then sometimes I'm just like, I see you guys well, it's not a- like talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk. Uh, I think it's great that you and Joe and Steve are able to consistently work and create things together and still have enough brain space to talk about whatever you want on your podcast every week. It's a lovely time. But that said, I'm also here in replace of the two of them. Yeah. So maybe that's not true at all. Yeah, no, it's I don't remember exactly how this this happened. Oh, the original plan was we were going to have uh, Pete Rollins be on the um, uh. podcast with uh, me and Steve, but then we were like, I don't know, it's a little heavy to have a Northern Irish guy. So then we did it ourselves and it ended up being super heavy. So we'll see if that ends up seeing the light of day. Neil Gummert says, what's one thing you've learned about each other during quarantine? Hmm. What's one thing? Um, sometimes you fart really loud. Okay. Babe. <laughs> as much as you want to put it on a Steve or Joe thing, you are also a participant in that activity occasionally. One time. Uh, I farted loud times. one time. A couple times. and uh, One time was not loud and it was, da- it was bad. <laughs> It was a, it was a, it had an intensity as if it was a full drum line, but. Uh, <laughs> it was like two days ago and I, I thought it was going to be a very, I was, on, I was right was there. It was thick air in the house. It was a, it was a bad situation <laughs> and I don't know how you could have stood still. Like at least if I have any inkling that something coming out of my body is going to create like a, 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 
smell barrier for someone else. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to move around and keep it moving. You stood in it. You celebrated exactly what your body produced. Don't judge me. <laughs> Where are you going? You moving now? Uh, this is what you should have done when you had the... Uh, I didn't come near you. I, I stayed real... Um... Yeah, I didn't know because there was no warning um, signals. And I went to hug you and I realized that you were standing in a invisible cloud of awful. <laughs> no, I really hate that. I, I never want you to to actually experience it. No, I mean, I'm not that day, kind of guy. The other day you came in from the deck and um, as you were walking in, it just farted so loud that I thought like a door hinge broke and that's what the noise was and you were just like, oh my God, I'm oh, so sorry oh, for sorry. that. That was... That was that came I out know. hot. You uh, you have this uh, extremely polite guilt about it. Yeah, immediately I, after, I think which it's is very cute. I don't like the like, oh my god, I'm gonna fart on you because I you're my girlfriend and that's I don't very sweet. Of but you. sometimes that was a big Sunday dinner. We yeah. made that big Sunday dinner on a Friday, uh -huh. and that was the and your body just didn't know how to handle it. I hadn't eaten all day, and then I had a bunch of garlic bread, and then things got bad. Things happen. Your body talks. Welcome to morning coffee ad time, guys. I hope you're enjoying this little episode of the Valley Cast uh, with special guest Grace Helbig. Um, it's another early morning here in Los Angeles, California, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about Stamps.com. Who likes going to the post office? I tell you what, it's a hassle. For me to go and it's certainly difficult to get out of the house period right now so what would be better than being able to use something like stamps.com for all your postage needs with stamps.com you can print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the post office plus you can actually save some money with the discount discounts that you can't even get at the post office because they're so super cool over there and if that wasn't enough stamps.com also offers ups services and discounts and up to uh with discounts up to 62 percent and no ups residential surcharges and i love finding out that things that I didn't know were a thing uh, aren't a thing. I have a doctor's appointment uh, <clears throat> in a second. Um, check out nothing. Anyway, stamps.com brings all the services to the U of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer and the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you're hunkering down right now. Whether you're a small business sending invoices and online seller shipping out products or you're just working from home and you need to mail stuff, guys, stamps.com will do it for you. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. And like I said with stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off of every first class stamp and up to 62% off shipping rate. Stamps.com is a no brainer, especially now, saving you time and money and keeping you safe in these crazy time so right now every listener of the valley cast every single one gets a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment just go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in valley cast that is stamps.com enter valley cast stay safe everybody um, i'm going to tell you about another thing too real fast and also feel free if you see uh ryan on the twitter uh or the um the discord or anything give him some love uh he's a good he's a good person and he does he's doing a lot for us right now i love him i love him i don't want to hug him um and he's having a, a tough tough week so anyway um i didn't know i would have mentioned this prior but i uh i figured why what 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 better place than right between you know two ads anyway working remotely doesn't mean you, get, you have to feel disconnected uh from your team well that this is news with miro you can get your work done together and collaborate wherever you are well this is perfect for us telecommuting is is great remote working that helps with the, the miro miro helps with that distributed teams call it what you like but more and more teams now work from home collaborate better and get work done faster with the help of miro oh miro is going to make our or your show episodes so much better now. And if you're still using an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper to brainstorm and organize your work, you need to expand your horizons. Mirror lets you visualize everything you're working on all in one place. I'm definitely gonna use it. My girlfriend likes to use a little paper with a checklist and boxes. I think that's cute, just cute. That's just a cute thing, but. I'm going to go for this. Miro is an online whiteboard that brings teams together anytime, anywhere. Mm. Their infinite canvas is perfect for brainstorming, making mock-ups, organizing files, and managing complex projects. Ooh, I would love to have a complex project one day. They even have templates to help you get started quickly. You can add your docs, spreadsheets, sticky notes, and other important information directly to Miro, so you always have a single, real-time collaboration hub. And Miro can integrate with the programs you already use, like Google Drive and Dropbox. Ooh, really? 
I wonder if it does like in we transfer and all. Anyway, you can even video chat with coworkers without ever leaving Miro. We're gonna try it. Over five million users worldwide trust Miro to help their teams work more efficiently. It's about to be three more. It's everything you need to start working together. So start collaborating for free when you sign up for an account at Miro.com slash Valleycast. That's M-I-R-O.com slash Valleycast to sign up for a free account with unlimited team members. Miro.com slash Valleycast. Start collaborating for free when you sign up for an account at http colon backslash backslash miro.com backslash valleycast. Okay, back to the show. I wonder what these, these goofballs are rambling about now. Um, What's one thing you've learned about each other during quarantine for like, you? Yeah, yeah. Like you didn't answer this question. We've, you know, I will say, not that I didn't know already, uh -huh. but I think we've, I think I've learned about you that you got, you got real, your real, um, you got a strong exterior a little bit, okay. but then on the inside, you're very mushy and you're very affected by a lot. Yeah, I'm things. like a, I'm like a creme brulee. As soon as you crack it, it's just all gooey inside. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's been charred on the outside. Ooh, it also sounds like just a rich person thing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is creme brulee? What is? It's that? like the dessert that you uh, fire the, the top flame. of and then you crack it open and it's like gooey on the inside. Yeah, it's like for fa at fancy restaurants. Sure, yeah. I don't know that I've ever actually had it, but I've seen it on Top Chef frequently well yeah you've i've learned that about you what else have i learned about you that you're hmm. you have a good you're got a, you're good good heart bad gut <laughs> <sighs> this girl's gut y'all will not stop yeah i mean i can't get it figured out it is speaking to me in riddles and i'm trying to figure <laughs> it out <laughs> it's rhyming to you every morning every day and we've gotten a little i don't know we haven't we've fought we had i think one two fights we don't fight very much mm -hmm. in the quarantine thing mm -hmm. we haven't but uh, how are you doing with it? Do you feel like we got to go? We got to go. We got to get out. What is this question? The that quarantine. was a... <laughs> oh. I got to go. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we're doing a great job. Yeah, we're doing a great job. This is so much to put on anyone. So it's... everyone's doing their best and I commend everyone for doing it because <laughs> yeah. we have to. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a lot to sift through. Yeah, that was one of the conversations we had recently. Just being like, this is so heavy. Like it feels like everything feels heavy. So. Well, it's also you're left to your own devices, so it's as heavy as you let it be, and then you're in yeah. control of allowing it to be a little lighter. So yeah, there's peaks and valleys where it feels like everything's too much, and then there's moments where you go, actually, I'm in control of my own destiny, and I can choose to see this as a frivolous, wonderful opportunity that's uh, silly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the world is insane, and so you can let that weigh on you, and it's just a, yeah, yeah. A insane balance. You can just turn off most screens. Yeah, it turns out you can turn off your screens. You can put your phone aside and not look at it, which is something I'm learning because right now that's not what I'm doing. I know. Um, but it's a practice I should uh, start. I've learned about myself. Goose has left the chat. Yeah, and I'm out. <laughs> uh, I've learned about myself that similar to when I was a toddler slash a baby, <clears throat> I get if... I'm tired at night. I get real grumpy. Real grumpy. Uh, and uh, the other night, Grace was really we trying We were watching to... Queer Eye. And look, I needed to watch Queer Eye to feel some sense that the world can be good and that there are pockets of optimism here and there. And I uh, and I went love into a rage fest. <laughs> it, you got uh, sleepy baby tired. And... <laughs> I wanted to finish the episode because I've met all the people in this man's life and I need to see all of their reactions. Mm -hmm. I need to see the conclusion to this narrative that I've started. And you just kept being like, when's it over? I'm like, give me like 10 minutes. 10 minutes passed. It was almost to the end, like another two or three minutes. And he stormed out of bed. He was so upset that I hadn't turned off the TV. I stormed out. I yeah. turned the volume down to like a three. And I was reading the subtitles on the TV so I could just get to the end of it. But, a three on Queer Eye is like a 10. But also, he had a, he had a sleep mask. Like he had full deprivation of sound and, and uh, light. And it wasn't enough. And then I turned it off. And you know what? I still haven't finished that episode. <laughs> that's how much I love you. Thank you. I love mm -hmm. you too. Um, and that's the extent of how also, we fight in quarantine. I stomped out and then came back. It was like, sorry. And then you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> Just so we're, we're wrapping up that. I don't want that to also be an uh, open-ended, uh, like... No, I um, what a dumb fight that I left Queer Eye on because I wanted to see the um, beautiful end of it and you just couldn't deal with noise. Yeah. 
Uh, especially like it was like twelve thirty, which isn't even that late. But I was like, you were no. tired when you're ready to. Sl- I get it. In the morning when That's I'm is, overly yeah. exhausted, I'm a little baby bitch. <laughs> I'm surprised we're getting through this as well as we are. Oh yeah, I'm. I've fully chugged all my coffee. And, really? Do you yeah. want some of mine? Uh, mm. No, I'll get my own a little bit. But I appreciate yeah. your help and your offer. Um, Neil again says any book or podcast recommendations, both for education and distraction purposes. Um, I really like this book called when Nietzsche wept. If you're looking for entertainment, that's slightly interesting. It's a fictionalized version of like Nietzsche and Freud and all that. So Ooh. real nerdy. It's right up my nerd alley. What's but, the uh, um, book that you recommend to me that's over there? Um, that I, Oh yeah. That's uh, super nerds that I haven't started yet, which obviously makes for a great recommendation. Um, yeah, before you know the unconscious reasons we do what we do or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, before you know the unco- yeah, you got it exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, we're very much into psychology and I've been looking into it a lot more lately. And so this book, um, this is some seems crazy to stuff. resonate. Yeah, I'm fascinated with human behavior and why. And I think in light of the way the world is happening right now, I, it makes me want to discover on a deeper level you know, the human psyche and, and the motivation and reasons that we do th- certain mm-hmm. things. And so I'm very excited to start this book. Yeah. And this is, it even as the section I'm on right now is about like, it talks about one guy who like fell in front of a subway uh, platform. Like he fell into the subway platform and uh, to save a blind guy and was able to like push him under the thing and save both their lives. And then he was like invited to the White House by Ronald Reagan. And then there's another woman who uh, f- jumps into the subway uh, platform to get her bag, and she ends up dying. And so it's this basically a whole chapter on like following your gut and the different times people follow their mm. gut and when to follow your gut. But it's got all this stuff in it, like how getting a flu shot can affect your attitude toward immigration, how holding a warm cup of coffee will make you friendly and open to others, and right. iced coffee will have the opposite effect. It's basically like how fragile we are and how how uh it's like human marketing yeah like here are certain things that you do and that affect your interactions with others why being afraid makes you more conservative and feeling safe makes you feel more liberal i think Which, that's a very interesting one to right talk about. and also i mean these also when you say them seem like common knowledge but it's never been like articulated and organized into um yep. this type of thing for me so i'm very excited to read it and on top of that um tv that i would recommend queer eye i would say i know exactly how this season goes but i'm about 98 percent through it and it is a lovely lovely wonderful um television show they're in philadelphia this season those guys know how to tug the heartstrings oh they, they know what they're doing that show that formula is perfect works like a charm and it's like every episode <sighs> Every episode, there's like uh, 33 uh, minutes into it. You know it's going to be the reveal Uh to the family. And the person that they're making over is going to have their moment to really stand up Uh and be an individual and like embrace their change and show it off. And it's, ah! But there's this moment that (sighs) happens in every episode that gets me where it's basically, apparently, I can't handle people not having any self-esteem like it breaks my heart and there's always a point in queer eye where they're like do you think you're beautiful and then they're like no yeah and i'm like yeah you're beautiful yeah yeah yeah. you know it as an audience member you're rooting them on you know what the end result's gonna be is that they're gonna see (laughs) their own beauty and you can't wait for it to get there wonder i love it i know i love the show because i know that it's gonna end in beautiful embracing lovely yeah. Uh, acceptance of one's individual self and unique person and nice and I, new wallpaper uh, and just some sweet stick on wallpaper from the new Bobby Burke line and then I love Kar- it. what's Kar- Karamo is going to make some metaphor about how the path that you're walking down is worth <laughs> embracing what you've already seen and uh, you know yep. uh, being open to expect what you don't know in the future ah uh, just incredible so lovely so lovely and then there's that book about Holden coffee then there's the book about holding coffee. All of it. That's what we're taking in. <laughs> Jumping in front of uh, subway stations. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Kaylee has some uh, advice that she would like. Okay. Kaylee says, I need some advice. That's how I knew. Oh, I thought she was giving advice. Mm. No, she needs some advice. Okay. Yeah. She says, I need some advice. Okay. I've been at the same job for almost five years. Okay. However, since starting college, I leave and just return to work during the summer. I've been working for two months. However, absolutely hate it. 
and I'm already so burned out. Any advice to help me get through the summer without losing my damn mind? Okay, wait. Read that one more time. She's been at the same job for five years. Same job for almost five years, but uh, since college, starting college, um, she leaves and just returns to work during the summer. Okay. And she's been now doing it for two months, and she absolutely hates it. So it sounds to oh. me like she's she's been doing the same job, summer job for five years, if I'm, if I'm getting that right, mm -hmm. um, and it's wearing on her. Yeah, you got to get out of there. Yeah, uh, any advice to help me get through the summer without losing my damn mind? Oh, okay. So you're stuck in this job till the end of the summer. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, I mean, also quitting is always just the easiest answer to, to get. It's always like break up, leave. Right. Thing. It's so and much it's like, easier said than done. Yeah. I think if you, uh, you know, you're only working for the summer, which is cool. Right. So that you have an end yeah. to this situation which isn't true for a lot of people that are in terrible jobs is that there's no foreseeable end to this terrible job mm -hmm. and how do they continue on you at least know that you have an end date in which you'll go back to school and get some separation from this job which should in and of itself be the biggest sense of relief ever Wonderful, right and if you come back to that on a regular basis where you go i get to leave rather than like how do i figure out staying that's massive and like uh who gets to say that about a job that they hate yeah um also just remember that this job is providing you financial um, security independence all of those things and when a job gets really bad i wish that you i wish we had details on like what kind of job it was because yeah. then you can start to create some sort of like creative observational games whether if it's a job in um you know customer service i don't know what this position mm -hmm. is no we have no idea we don't have enough information kaylee when i was um before i went to college i waited tables and then i also because i was a dork and wanted to fill up all my free time with work i worked the front desk of a, a pool a swim club mm -hmm. and there was no it was right like when we got cell hot. phones <laughs> not hot at all it's where i read all the harry potter books because i worked in this like harry. little <laughs> This little <laughs> corridor that had no cell phone service and I wasn't like cool friends like with yeah. the lifeguards or anything. So I just sat there all day and like maybe, maybe 50 people would come in and out through the course of like a six hour shift. Yeah. And so I just sat and read Harry Potter and I had to remind myself that as boring as it was, I was getting paid to read Harry Potter books. Yeah, that's when I used to work at Disney, we would have... Um shifts called spare shifts and your entire job was to go into work drink gatorade sit on a couch in the event that another person called in sick so right. you were like an extra person so it would be 10 hours of just getting paid doing work mm -hmm. getting free food and all that and chilling it was if, great yeah and if if you do have that kind of job where you're like what am i doing i'm doing nothing then that's an opportunity for you to create something out of mm -hmm. that like free time that you have while you're being on the clock paid, you know? Yeah, and I will say, Kaylee, I empathize a little bit with, uh, in addition to everything that's going on in the world right now, you, you can't even find solace necessarily uh, on the internet. Uh, yeah. and a, it's, there's not a lot of peace right now. Um, I, I I can't imagine also having to add on to that a job that just makes you feel dead. Um, yeah, and if you like you say you say you feel so burned out currently, that what do you got for it? <laughs> I'm like I'm trying to really understand this that you're already so burned out by it. Then sometimes when you reach that level of like your gears have ground so hard that there's no gear shifts left, they're all just actual wheels, like maybe there's an opportunity to see how ridiculous and hilarious this is. Again, I don't know how insane or mm -hmm. serious your job might be, but if there's an opportunity to find the silliness in something that is so Cardiac like surgery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heart surgery. Um, <laughs> It also, Kaylee, keep in mind, good news, if you are hating it and you're losing your mind and you're doing everything to keep yourself together, that means probably you're experiencing pain, which means you're probably growing as a person Ooh, one day. You're yeah. going to be able to look back and you'll be like, look at what I was able to survive without going crazy. Yeah. Also, uh, you'll never be able to experience this currently, but in the future, if you have this terrible experience with this job right now, this is such uh, groundwork to be able to compare future job situations too yep. you know like you'll never experience good unless you've experienced bad like yep. this will be something that you can go i've done this that burned me out one month into the summer after coming back after mm -hmm. five years like i can do anything there you go
You got to find the optimism in it. We really did it. Or it sucks and you quit and you get a different job. You start an Etsy shop. I don't know. Everyone's doing everything right now. And thanks for being a patron. Uh, yeah, you, uh, well, you got one great thing going for you. You're part of a community of beautiful humans that is, seem to uh, try to find the joy in life, and that's beautiful. Well, and speaking of beautiful humans who try to find the joy in life, Austin Badola says, "What's your favorite way to eat pop to make popcorn?" This is a this is where we. This is a get, sensitive topic. I I didn't think it would get to this in this episode. <laughs> I thought we were going to keep it light, but I guess here we are. Yeah, we have differing opinions on popcorn. I wait. And if there's one thing you have learned about me in quarantine, I think it is maybe this. Yeah, Grace likes the burnt popcorn. I like to burn popcorn. I know that's disgusting, and I can hear the collective groan of so many of you. No, people like it's a popular thing at this point. Well, but the people that don't like it are very aggressively against it. Whereas I think, I think people that burn their popcorn are way more open to however anyone wants their popcorn. And people that don't like burnt popcorn are so much more opinionated about how wrong it is wait so you're putting I'm a moral s- yeah i think there's label on who on how i'm saying people that like burnt communities? popcorn are much more welcoming human beings in general right and people that think burnt popcorn is disgusting are usually very close-minded wow do you think maybe you're projecting a little bit likely <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. you like your popcorn like everyone likes their popcorn. Normal, normal, popcorn. And buttery and gross. I, I like, like it I like with a little hands. grit. I like yeah. a popcorn with character. I like popcorn that's seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so gross. And it I smells so what, bad. And it I tastes love terrible. it. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's that same quality when people love the smell of gasoline. I don't know, but I I like it's burnt popcorn. Like that, yeah. yeah. I also don't like having to 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 like. But it's not. Go decide it, which, like, look at the popcorn. And be like, this one's burnt. This one's not. Like, I just like people to grab a handful. Of no, not same. Burnt. That's what I do. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like mixed nuts. Um, Neil again says, "What's one thing the internet doesn't know about the other person?" And or Steve and Joe. And or Steve and Joe. Uh, what is one thing that the internet doesn't know? About Joe, the, the internet didn't know a lot about Joe that he talked about in, his, in the podcast with Phil. Oh that was yeah. Really good. Like his family life. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important because it's very easy to look at Joe and think of him as just this independent internet creator. Yeah. And then when you realize he's a father, he's a husband, that is such a bigger context of who he is. And by default, I think makes the fact that he is thriving on TikTok all the funnier. Oh, so great. <laughs> that he is a family man that also is able to put his brain into this like uh, Gen X platform mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh, yeah. He's got a brain for that kind of thing that it's like he's just got to find the lane to to like drive the car. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. It's, Of course, it's TikTok because it's great. It's so, like he was showing me one the other day. Babe, that was like I showed you a little bit of it, but he I, I don't know a lot about TikTok. They do stuff and then other people make Can stuff. Can take the sound bites and yeah. make their own things. And yeah. what it was being made into from what he had done and how far people had taken mm-hmm. it was pretty crazy and like yeah. made me have respect for the TikTok world because I was like, oh, this is like a brain, a part of the brain that is very funny. And now I'm seeing more and more TikToks get shared. Sarah Whittle's mm-hmm. a wonderful resource for it. Oh, yeah. She DM'd me this, that video of that dog waiting for also, her Also, she's got great TikToks <laughs> of her cats uh, that I love so much. <laughs> They're wonderful. Yeah. Well, she has a cat named Puppy. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, what's the one thing the internet doesn't know about the other person that no, that's not. I mean, that's probably all by design, right? Yeah. Like I not, don't know what's one thing that the internet doesn't know about you. Maybe that you're um, a fashionista. That you like clothes and you like putting looks together and you uh, take good care of your um, clothing aesthetic. Listen, I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I went on like a <laughs> shameless DM spree. Yeah, you did. Two shirt companies. One of them was a sponsor of the Valley Cast. Uh, and I'm wearing this shirt right now. It's called Cuts. But I was like, please. They look good on you. Thank you so much. I was like, please give me more. And it only worked once, but it worked. <laughs> yeah. And I got shirts for it. And uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. But that's my new, uh, that was my new thing where I was getting really bored. And I was like, well, okay. What I have I got to, to lose? Let's just get to see what I, I can like get. these shirts. I like this clothing. It suits me. It's yeah. my aesthetic. And yeah, that's something that now you know. And I've never had, okay, 
<laughs> I got a real, I'm real picky when it comes to t-shirts. Also, I change t-shirts like three or four times a day, which yeah, is super weird. Yeah, he has costume changes all day long. I like, well, also, I got nothing to do. Yeah. I got, it's like, <laughs> you gotta entertain this? yourself Look somehow. at this, yeah. Uh, we wear our onesies a lot, too. Grace yeah. and I get very, uh, at night, we will. Comfy. We get very, yeah, we wear our comfies off of Shark Tank, which is real nice. Mm-hmm. So Capitalism. the internet doesn't know that. Yeah. Uh, no, you you uh, you pay close attention to curating a, a specific look for yourself, which I, I think is admirable. Um, well, thank you so much, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm so tired from blowing smoke up your ass. I know. <laughs> Uh, it's it's me feeling good and Joe's TikTok account is yeah, feeling yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, that's the theme of this episode. Joe uh, or Sarah Griffiths again says, uh, "What have you guys been doing to lift each other's spirits throughout all this?" Ooh, that's a good question because there have been some low spirits. Um, I think, I think just the uh, very sweet, simple like you're doing okay acknowledgement yeah. of each other is really meaningful and really helpful we'll and i stuff. i tend to get very overwhelmed by internet uh especially now um in an effort to educate and learn and and absorb a lot of things and your ability to just literally go you're doing okay it's okay is extremely <laughs> helpful okay oh, yeah no i think that's we both do that we will we'll have some kind of knowledge that things are tense and then we're, we take we're a lot of good. it on yeah, yeah but we're good at being like, all right, let's talk this through. It's beat okay. Saber, too. Uh, and Beat Saber. Like, okay, no, that doesn't look... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, I'm angry. I'm angry. Why? Well, so I got an Oculus Quest, the first toy I've bought for myself in many years. Mm -hmm. And um, Grace is immediately better at Beat Saber than I am. And I have yet to consistently be able to defeat her scores but no it's just a matter of time because like scrabble as soon as you decide you're going to get good at it there's no stopping you and i don't stand a chance so mm -hmm. i'm enjoying this moment of uh being slightly better than you only slightly because i know it won't last that's how i feel about scrabble except i am i'm still in lead thank goodness <laughs> um but yeah no i need to get to work on it because very busy we're very I busy can't, it's, it's, she's so you're so good like it's just it's but it's like it's not even about being good it's just very cathartic to me right now it's like a very dumb mm -hmm. uh uh it's total escape, like yeah, minds, because your brain does. It makes you feel like you're off. playing drums, which is an instrument. If, I always said, if I learned an instrument, I wish I could play drums. Yeah. Like Kim from Matt and Kim is, I think, one of the most fun yeah. drummers. She just has the best time uh, doing it, and I've always been like, that's so cool. I wonder what that feeling is like. It looks so like just purely wonderful, mm -hmm. and. Beat Saber is creating a fantasy of that I, for me. <laughs> I wonder if there's an actual like drum um, education along with it, like on, on or no, uh, like, like you download, Hero? yeah, like well, no, like I wonder if you could actually download. Oh, drum. I'm sure. Yeah, we've only scratched the surface of what the Oculus has to offer. That so. sounds very fun. I want to do that. There you go. Like today and also, yeah, to do it without any actual noise. Yeah. Wonderful. What's the small thing that you like? You know, we're doing a lot of the complimentary. <laughs> yeah nice. where's some questions that really tear us apart <laughs> yeah let's make it tough yeah let's really create a riff that is irre uh, irreparable irreparable uh-huh um just saw what uh the paper grace is holding says oh no i hope you're both feeling like the best possible garbage so i put the picture on here which where you oh. cracked me up where you wrote i feel like garbage oh yeah 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 i got overwhelmed that day uh, we were very tired. I didn't sleep well, and I just didn't feel... And I also was, like, a PMSing. So it was a perfect storm. And then Elliot was outside, and I wrote him a message to just really express how I was feeling at the moment. <laughs> but it it scared the crap out of me because I was there's a glass, and I'm sitting there, and, poof, and I look back, and it's just a, I feel like garbage. And uh -huh. It's very funny, yeah. and I felt real bad, and I'm glad you're doing better. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes you got to, like, just say it, and then it takes the air out of it a little bit. What's your favorite dad joke? Do you know a dad joke? What's my favorite dad joke? Yeah. Yours. Is that a joke? Like your dad? I don't know. It's I'm terrible at dad jokes. What's your favorite dad joke? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember jokes off the top of my head. Yeah. The dad That's why I can't do stand up. There's a lot of like meme accounts right now that are doing dad jokes. Middle class fancy is probably my favorite um, mm -hmm. account that will do dad jokes. And also, it's always... the beginning of every Dear Hank and John podcast, Hank starts it off with a dad joke. Oh, that's to fun. John. Yeah, and it's always very fun because 
John clearly hates them so much, but yeah. every now and then they're so bad that it's lovely. I didn't know that was a regular thing. I yeah, just thought, it's every okay. episode. Because every time, well, the one time I heard it, uh, John was just like, I, I heard it. Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> it's it a good very, impression. Yeah. I don't. Um, cool. Yeah, guys, it's been a nutty time. What are we looking at here? Yeah. 40 minutes. Um, final closing thoughts. I tell you, Grace, this has been... A wonderful episode, best episode we've ever done. Wow! But uh, who knew today was the day? Yeah. Uh, just so you guys know, I hope you're all doing absolutely wonderful. And don't worry, we're going to be back to our normal uh, Valley Cast really soon. We're also filming more your shows and no more all sorts of things um, that are real cool. I even uh, I won't get into one thing, but it's going to be just just wonderful. But in the meantime, secret project, secret project. No, that's not. It's not a secret project. But this is a d- disappointing mm. thing. This the story <laughs> is disappointing. Uh, but this whole experience has been so uh, uh, educational. And so I just want to recommend uh, that people start uh, reading and downloading things and looking into the stuff that you're saying because I personally have been blown yeah. away by the amount of resources and the amount of things, this world of information um, that as uh, a result of everything going on right now that I didn't really know about at all. And it's yeah. super nice. And I hope you guys are also kind of along for that ride because I'm sure we're going to be talking about it more. Um, and other areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep uh, keep listening. Keep learning. Yeah, we're yeah. doing it. Yeah, it's wonderful. Also, we're going to be doing uh, the pilot on podcast, so please check that out as well. Mm-hmm. And subscribe to youtube.com slash the valley folk and subscribe to youtube.com slash it's grace because she's sure. beautiful and wonderful. And oh, look, at face. Face. look at her face. That very sweet. Look at her face. Look at her face. Also, go check out Joe's TikTok if you guys haven't. We a have a wealth of entertainment over there. I mean, and he's like a being a he's a little rascal over there just doing his thing. And uh, uh, how dare he? You know? Uh, how dare he have such humility? Ugh, unbelievable. It's also just like he's got a. He should just do that for the. That should be the. That should be his thing for the Valley Focus. I think it is. Who knows? He has to sign over his account. We have to talk to a lawyer about it. Yes.